Hey guys, today I'm doing a little tutorial in KSP for reusable rockets because I've been doing lots of stuff with reusable rockets for a while um, in KSP in my career mode saves and things, but I've never really done an official tutorial on how to do it. So I thought that might be helpful for people who've watched the series or people who haven't and are just generally interested. So this is a totally uh, stock version of KSP, and I'm gonna well discuss how I do reusable rockets. Now there are many ways of uh, doing reusable vehicles. You can have SSTO planes, SSTO rockets on that hardened KSP, but I really like um, the idea of. Uh, stock reusable two-stage rockets. There's mods that can help with this, but it is possible in stock, even though it seems like it might not be that possible, because you imagine that when you ditch your first stage, it's just going to kind of disappear and unload as you push yourself on into orbit. But you can actually catch it in time if you build your rocket right and fly it right. So we're going to do that today. So let's go into the VAB, build ourselves a rocket, fly it, and recover it. I guess it's more a recoverable rocket. We're not technically reusing the parts, but uh, but still, so, the first thing we're going to need is, of course, a payload. Um, so we'll just grab some fuel. We'll just do like a 10-ton payload to make this easier and make it work. Um, you can obviously do it with, you just build a bigger rocket for bigger payloads, but we're just going to do a smallish payload for the purpose of the tutorial. So it'll need a probe, a reaction wheel, because why not? Um, and then if we also just throw some solar panels on it, it doesn't really matter. This is just a dummy payload. It's not really going to do anything. So, yeah, that'll be fine. This is... Just a little under 10 tons, and uh, yeah, we'll name it Reusable Rocket. There we go. And save that and overwrite it from the tutorial I totally didn't just record and went wrong. <laughs> and then we'll throw it a coupler down here, and then a fairing, of course, which is here where. It... Oh, it's in payload now. <sighs> I will never get used to this slightly updated, um, <laughs> updated part places. I'm used to the older versions of KSP. Anyway, and then we'll just put the fairing around it. Now, the fairing won't be reusable. Um, as it, companies like SpaceX are working on reusing fairings, because in real life they're really expensive, and actually in the game they're kind of expensive. Um, so it would be nice to reuse them, but these aren't actually real parts when they decouple. They just sort of disappear once you time warp, and you can't switch to them or anything. So you can't really use reuse fairings unless you build your own custom ones that have like wings, which is possible. Um, but for this, we're just gonna uh, <laughs> we're just gonna use the normal fairings because we're working on reusing the rocket, not the fairings. Um, anyway, so then you're gonna need, of course, the second stage to push it on into orbit. We're just gonna I'm gonna use quite a big second stage. Um, this is overpowered for the payload, but this rocket could obviously put more mass in orbit. But I find it's really useful to have a powerful engine on the second stage, and I'm using a skipper, which kind of for all te intents and purposes is sort of a first stage engine but it works really well as a second stage engine especially on uh, reusable rockets because it means you can get into orbit really quickly and switch back to your first stage to land it so that's what we're going to do with that and then of course we'll need us uh, our first stage and then we'll work on making it reusable so i'll need uh the decoupler and then you know what let's make it pretty big let's let's make a decent sized rocket i don't know is this too big I mean, it's too big for the payload, but I think uh, this will be a pretty good... Yeah, this yeah, it'll be fine, hopefully, if we have enough thrust. So, uh, what I'm going to do at the bottom, because this is my main fuel, but we're going to need some fuel for landing, because I'm going to land partially on parachutes, but I also like to bring some landing fuel. So, we're going to take one of these small tanks, and then right-click on it, and then click these arrows here, which means this fuel won't burn until um, we want it to. So, we'll click on this in-flight and do this to land it so that it doesn't get burned... So that fuel doesn't get burned while we're actually launching the first stage. We don't need to do that on the second stage because um, this will, well, it'll get to orbit before it runs out of fuel. So yeah, and then, um, well, you have lots of options for engines, of course. It is totally your preference. Um, there's obviously the Rocker Max is pretty good. I personally am quite a big fan of using uh, lots of small engines. Actually, I think this is probably my favorite engine, the Vector, because you could actually put a bunch of these on the first stage, and they are really powerful, and if you bring the gimbal limit down to like 20, it's actually a really effective engine um, for normal rockets, but it is very expensive, but this is a reusable rocket, so it wouldn't matter that much. I, however, today I'm just going to go for some smaller engines. I want to build something kind of Falcon 90, so I'm going to use some of these engines. Now, the LVT, uh, the LVT-30 and the LVT-45 are similar engines, except the 30 has a higher thrust and a higher ISP, which is really useful. Um, but this engine has the ability to gimbal, so you're obviously going to want some gimbal, but you can actually get a little more efficiency in thrust, and these are actually lighter as well than these engines, by using a few of these. So I'm going to use five of these and two, four of these uh, to make nine engines. 
Um, so we're going to put one of these in the center, and then we're going to put them on the outside, and the way I usually do this, this isn't really important for reusing rockets, but it's just another cool little rocket tip, is if you get some of these um, tail connectors, and then we'll quadruple them since we're going to have multiple engines, um, and do this, and then you can throw your engines on there like that. Ooh, if we just... There we go. And then grab them again. And this allows you to have a bunch of engines on the outside that do stick out from the... Are we there we go <laughs> that do stick out from uh, from the rocket but actually look quite smooth and in place and from the bottom this looks quite nice it doesn't look that Falcon 90 it would probably look nicer if we did this that would look kind of just that does look nicer but I think with the size of this rocket we're gonna need the extra thrust and ISP from these so we're gonna leave it like that and I think that still does look pretty cool so yeah those are the engines done that was a bit of a <laughs> tangent and uh, maybe a waste of time. However, if you wanted to land this on land, which I don't think we'll be doing today, but it could be possible and I'll we'll explain how you might do that, um, you could put some landing legs on this fairly easily because it's, they're much smaller engines, whereas if you were using a rocket max, it would be much harder to do that. So this can actually be very useful for reusing rockets, so it's not totally just me building a slightly too aesthetic rocket in a tutorial which I should be keeping short, but I'm doing a poor job of. Anyway, so, now we're going to need to make it reusable. Now, we already have our fuel down here, which will help. Um, but the main thing is we're going to need to be able to control the rocket on the way down. So, <clears throat> the way I do this, uh, the way I attach a probe, is I grab one of these parts, these uh, radial attachment points. And then I just throw a probe on there. Now, I would suggest getting a mod for this, um, because there's, uh, I think... It's like stock, uh, stock extension or stock-alike extension or something like that. They actually include a bunch of parts that are like this but smaller, which would reduce the mass, but these are already pretty light parts. You can see that they're only about um, 0.04 tons. And then you're going to want to attach a probe to it. I'm just going to go with the smallest probe because we don't really need the torque. We just need, um, well, we just need some kind of control, and it will obviously also need a battery. So we're going to put that on like this. And once that's done, we'll just use the rotate tool to make it point upward, like that. And then the, oh, actually, we're gonna just going to copy this real quick, because we're going to need another one for the uh, top stage. So we'll do that before we put it inside the rocket and just put it there. Um, and then we're going to use the move tool to put it in the center of the rocket so that it doesn't offset the drag at all. Um, is that center? I think that's center. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get this and put this in the center of the stage. Uh, now, this technically would just work as a reusable rocket. Now, if you're really good at propulsive landings, this is done. This would work. I, however, am not the greatest at propulsive landings on Kerbin. Because there's high gravity, there's atmosphere, it's kind of hard to balance. So what I usually do, just to make it easier, if I'm using no mods um, or limited mods, is I'll just use parachutes. Um... I won't use a ton of parachutes because it's quite hard to get even an empty stage to land entirely under parachute power. You need to bring quite a lot with you. So I'm just going to put six on the um, on this stage. And then we'll use the center engine to slow us down for landing um, using that little bit of fuel we have there, which actually might be a little difficult to access. Uh, that might be a little troublesome, but we should be able to do that in flight, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. You can just zoom in and click on it. That's the you, you could put it at the top just to make it easier, but this means it'll be a bottom heavy, which means it will fall engine first <clears throat> through the atmosphere, which is what you want. All right. So at the top stage, we're going to do the same. We're going to put three parachutes on this. It will hopefully land mostly. Pro well, it'll land partially propulsively, but we'll also have parachutes just in case. And we're going to throw all of the parachutes in the top stage just to just so we can forget about them. And now this is done. This is a reusable rocket. Hopefully, it has the right thrust to weight ratio because it is quite a tall rocket, um, but and it only has these smaller engines. But it should be fine. So we're going to try it out now. We're going to throw some um, uh, some launch struts on here. Uh, the stability enhancer. Just put a three on there. I'll put four for symmetry, and uh, throw that in that stage there. And, oh, one other thing you're going to want to do is go into the action groups. If you have them in your career mode save, or if you're playing in sandbox, um, I've just noticed that the, these engines are actually a little bit far in. Like, they should work, but if you wanted it to be slightly more aesthetically pleasing, I guess you'd move them slightly further out just so they don't clip at all. But they should still work and everything should be fine. Anyway, I'm just going to set up an action group for, for toggling the outer engines since we probably won't need them for landing. Um, now, if you are in career mode, you may not have unlocked that. In my uh, very long running series in career mode, I haven't actually unlocked reaction, uh, no, uh, action groups yet because I couldn't be bothered to pay for the new 
um, vehicle assembly building because it was quite expensive. But uh, yeah, you, you can do that just to make things a little easier rather than having to manually shut them down. So yes, let's launch this now. And uh, yeah, send it into orbit. Now this is of course most useful if you're doing a, like a hard career mode save on hard settings because then you're going to save a lot of money and it's just generally going to be more possible to do this. So. What are we going to do with the rocket? Um, well, we're just going to take a pretty normal but a little steep launch trajectory. We're going to decouple the first stage and let it fall back and hopefully get it with a high enough apoapsis that we can get into orbit with the second stage before the first stage hits the ocean and then we're going to grab that and uh, hopefully land it before the second stage gets into orbit. So, let's just go and try this now. It's better to see than to explain. So, uh, we're going to take off. And that's a pretty good thrust to weight ratio, and it does look nice with these um, with these nine engines. It is a little bit Falcon 9 -y. I very much do like this kind of design um, with the lots of little engines. Also means if you had an engine failure, it might still get to orbit. I don't know, it will probably flip out, but maybe if they were all gimbling, you wouldn't have too much of a problem. And then we're just going to take a, like I said, kind of a bit of a steep launch trajectory. It's not going to be quite as efficient, um, but it is much easier if you get your um, apoapsis is above about 50 kilometers. Um, with the first stage before it burns out, because that's probably going to give you just enough time to actually get all the, um, to grab it before it hits the ocean, because um, the things in the atmosphere um, will despawn when they're below 24 kilometers if you're up in space. So you're really going to want to uh, make sure that you switch to it before it hits that, or you're going to lose the stage and lose the money. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're steep, this is actually quite a steep launch trajectory, maybe too much actually. Um, you could probably go shallower than this, this is probably going to cost us a little bit in efficiency. But it doesn't matter too much because we don't have to be so efficient because our um, rocket is reusable. So uh, we can, yeah, we can, we, we can, we can just build a bigger rocket. Um, now you could also put a bunch of extra parts on this, some air brakes, some thrusters. That would make it easier to uh, reuse, it would make it easier to turn in space, and uh, it make it easier to... Ooh, wow, we've got a really high apoapsis, Jesus. Um, <laughs> how high is that? That's 65? That's a little high, but it's actually probably going to help us out. Um, but you could make it much lower than that. But that will make it very easier for us to catch this before it hits um, 24 kilometers. But anyway, let's race on into orbit now before we're going to switch. Uh, before we switch to that, uh, 75 kilometers should do. And we'll do a quick save here, just in case I screw this up, which I may well. And uh, we'll carry on. Now, as I was saying, you could put like air brakes on it and maybe some thrusters and things just to make it better. Air brakes are really helpful for reusable rockets since they slow it down a lot more in the atmosphere. I'm going to set this as our target so we can see its altitude. It's at 62 kilometers right now. And uh, just as we're approaching our apoapsis, we're going to turn over, ditch these payload fairings. Oh, I didn't put them on clamshell, which always looks much nicer, but it doesn't matter too much. And then we're going to race into orbit. And you'll see here the skipper is so useful. We're going to get into orbit really quickly with this. It does sacrifice efficiency, but it does make it more likely that you will be able to catch that first stage in um, before it hits the ocean. And that is really important. Um, you can be a little less efficient if you're using reusable rockets because... The efficiency is only really important because of money, right? Um, so <laughs> if you're not spending much on the rocket at all, it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, we are just going to push this on into orbit now and uh, hopefully have lots of fuel left over in this. We should. We're using a pretty small payload. This is a pretty weak payload for a rocket this size. But um, but yeah, for the, <laughs> for, the, for the purpose of demonstration, it's absolutely fine. Um, and yes, this is, still, this is still above 50 kilometers. We're going to be absolutely fine with this. Um, and we'll just balance this, try and get into a good orbit, and uh, go and land. So there we go, we're in orbit, and now we can switch to this. With all the time in the world, we'll even do a little quick save, or not. There we go. Switch to it and go and land it. Now you'll notice that I'm landing on the water, in the ocean. I've done no boost back burn, how boring of me. You could indeed do a boost back burn, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, I'm not sure, I, I never do them, <laughs> just to be clear. Usually I let them land in the ocean because it's really easy, because you don't have a lot of time to do like a boost back burn, and it will be quite fuel expensive. This gets you back a little less money, but it is very convenient. And uh, we like ourselves a little convenience here at, uh, at, at here at Tape Get, it's not, it's not a company, <laughs> here at Tape Corp. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a little convenience is always nice. Um, annoyingly, this is not a gimbling engine. I should have set the center engine to be gimbling, because that would allow me to control it on the way down. Um, that was foolish of me. But it should be naturally stable-ish um, <laughs> if it stops swaying around. And it will land on parachutes, so we're good. And we have all the time in the world to land this, so it's fine. 
Um, but yeah, as you can see, bre uh, air brakes would slow us down a lot better, and that would be quite nice. Um, but yes, so that's the re also the reason I don't have landing legs on this, is because we're landing on the ocean, we don't need landing legs, it would just be an unnecessary expenditure. I'm going to start throttling up this middle engine now to get us slow enough to um, pull our chutes, because we don't want to be pulling them too late, because then we risk hitting the ocean. Uh, so there we go, pull the chutes. And now we're pretty much good. Oh, the 1.3 shoots, or I guess it was 1.2 shoots, look really nice. I have been playing in 1.1 for ages because my series, I just haven't updated the mods. So I really get to see the nice looking parachutes, but they do look good. Anyway, so the shoots will pull, that'll slow us down mostly, but it is still a very heavy vehicle. Um, oh, no, we're, we're eight, eight meters per second. We should be able to land perfectly safely like this. Um, I think they may have changed the parachutes, but yeah, so I didn't even need the engine. But you could do it with no engine if you really wanted, or um, with less parachutes, uh, save a little mass, get a little better payload mass to orbit. Um, but yeah, we are going to fire up the engine anyway, just to keep it safe, because if it hits the ocean at 8 meters per second, there's a chance it'll get damaged, we'll lose an engine or something. I've, I've lost all the land, I can't see it, I've kind of freaked out, I don't know where I am. Um, but yeah, we've got tons of fuel as well, so we'll just throttle up a little bit, and just kind of gently throttle up um, as we hit the ocean. And ooh, there we go, I think we recovered it fine. Yeah, there we go, so that is a... First stage recovered, and we'll get how much of the money back will we get for that? Doesn't tell me, it's sandbox mode. <laughs> I probably should have done this in career mode. Um, but yeah, so that usually would be not like between 80 and 90% of the money back, which may not be enough for you. You may be thinking, Tape, you you totally just lamed out on that, man. You got me back 80% of my money. I need more than that, man. Give me my goddamn money, man. Um, because, I don't know, maybe you're a, maybe you're a gangster? <laughs> but yes. Um, but you could do a boost back burn, and we'll take a look at that. It's a little difficult, but we'll we'll give it a shot later. But now we need to bring back the second stage. So we're going to decouple our glorious payload. We're going to um, deploy the solar panels. Kind of wish I'd kept it on, deployed them first. Is this okay for electric charge? It is. We put two batteries in there, so we're good. So yes, this uh, payload is all very well in orbit. And now we can switch back to the stage, and we've got to bring this back. Now... Bringing a stage back to the KSC is not an exact science. This is not rocket science we're doing. This is rocket flailing and hoping, um, which is my uh, specialty, actually. I have a uh, master's degree in uh, rocket flailing and hoping, and oh my god, did you just crash that? Oh my god, the humanity. It's not a very popular degree, but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, I also didn't... I've, I've just noticed I also don't have um, the connections on. I don't have the... Um, communications on just because I forgot to turn it on in the save but if you were to do that you would just throw an antenna in on here um, you just throw a small atmosphere proof antenna on there um, so and that would be fine um, so yes but we're not doing that here because I didn't turn communications on anyway so my heuristic for uh, landing for second stages or anything back at the KSC is to roughly line up on the other side of the planet to this bit of land conveniently um, being under, you can't really see it right now, but if this were in the light and this were in the dark and you couldn't see this, you would be just below this little bit of land here that comes down, this little peninsula. They're actually on the opposite sides of the planet to each other, which is really useful. And, uh, yes, and then you do your deorbit burn. Here it could be very useful to have thrusters, uh, to reorientate your spacecraft, but you can just use the gimbal of the engine. And then you, ooh, I overburned there. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and fix this. So what you want is to have a periapsis of about 30 kilometers over this peninsula right here. I also don't have any... Oh, damn, I don't have any... <laughs> I don't have any turn authority, any... Um, yeah, oh, I do. That's odd. Okay, I'm just doing a quick, quick save and try and turn it around with my... Uh, turn it around with a bit of engine gimbal, turn the SAS off, because I want this to be at 30 kilometers, because I want to actually get it right in this tutorial. Um... So we're going to lock up there, just just, just time warp to, to stop us rotating, because cheating. And then just burn out until that's 30 kilometers. So yeah, that's about right. Um, and then we're going to go and do our deal, but burn. We want to go engine first, because the engine is quite heat resistant. Um, however, <laughs> um, I don't have any control here. It would be good, to actually, to have a reaction wheel um, or, um, or a thruster, just like... You could just have, like, a couple of thrusters. Well, I guess minimum three. Um, 
Uh, and then you could control your spacecraft a little better. Although this does appear to have a little bit of torque, and it should be naturally stable again because the engine is the heaviest part, so that should want to go to, through the atmosphere first, so it should be naturally stable. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll work. Anyway, so yes, we're just going to let this fall back. Hopefully it won't burn up. It doesn't in 1.1. I haven't actually tried this a ton in 1.3, so this advice may be a little outdated. Oh, don't say that in your tutorial. Ah, you've already watched the ad. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you'll pick up some heat, hopefully survive it, um, you know, uh, do your best. Uh, and if you do start picking up uh, too much temperature, you could th throttle up your engine a bit. You can see we've got like 300 units of fuel left, which is more than enough um, to land, especially under parachutes. So yeah, you could throttle up a little bit to slow this down, um, if you so desired, if you were burning up a bit. But hopefully, we'll land somewhere in the KSC. I think we're actually going to come in a little bit behind it, maybe even on the mountains, which is where you really don't want to land. Landing on the mountains is not ideal. Come on, baby. Fly over those mountains. I think it might just make it over the mountains. Uh, not a bad... Ooh, ooh, this is tense. Oh, it looks so... No, 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 we're going to hit those mountains. Okay, so here you could do a burn like this to stop yourself from hitting the mountains. Oh, no, I screwed it up. Now we're going to land on the mountains. You know what? Yes, we're going to land on the mountains. It's not so bad landing on the mountains, you just don't want to land on the mountain side. Okay, we've used most of our fuel to stop ourselves hitting the mountains. This is now a tutorial in redirecting spacecraft. Yeah, so that is also uh, an occasional hazard, is you might land in the mountains. <laughs> uh, so yeah, maybe on some you want to have your periapsis a little past this peninsula over here to actually land at the KSC. But uh, yeah, we should be fine landing in the foothills, and we should get most of our money back, although this is sandbox, so there's no money to get back, so I can't give you real numbers. But hey, you know how to use rockets now, you're all good. And then when we land, it's useful to have a shadow while landing, or a mod that tells you your distance from the uh, surface, which, yeah, this is easier with at least some mods, but it is possible with stock, as you will see now with this 100% perfect, oh my god, please actually work landing. Now this actually has more thrust for landing than the first stage, because we're using a skipper engine instead of one of the nine engines. But uh, we should be good. Oh yeah, that actually is a bit much. Oh no, no, it's okay. If I just slow down a little more, and there we go. Oh no, please don't break. There we go. And we'll recover that. And we've reused a full rocket. We got all our money back. All our money that doesn't exist in sandbox mode. And yes, that is the basic way of reusing most of a rocket. Minus the fairings and the bit you lose from not landing at the KSC. Now, we will explore a boost back burn right now. Um, it's There are some ways to do it like this. And the way I'm going to go for is... Um, well, you'll see. So we'll get ourselves our reusable rocket, which is here. And we're just going to add an extra fuel tank to it. So what we're going to do is add another small fuel tank, uh, like this. And we're going to not let it use any of the fuel. And then when we get up to altitude and decouple this, we're going to quickly switch back to it, orientate it the other way, and um, and and then, then, then just burn that way. You'll see what I mean. We're not going to bother bringing back the second stage again, uh, because you've already seen that. That doesn't change. Basically, the way to get that back to the KSC is just kind of fine-tune your apoapsis, uh, your periapsis, your kind of position and everything else. Um, and yeah, until you get it right, uh, that's just a fine-tuning thing. But bringing this back closer to the KSC, it's not impossible in stock. It's a little more difficult. I'm personally not much of an expert in doing that. I usually just let it land in the ocean. Um, also, if you were going to actually bring it back to the KSC, you could use landing legs to make it the, the landing a little nicer. But usually when I land rockets on land, which I occasionally do, I just land it on the engines. I find that's absolutely fine. It works fine. If you land, far, if you land gently, it won't break the engines. So yeah, anyway, we're going to take another steep trajectory, which is actually even more beneficial for this, because if we have more sideways trajectory, <clears throat> more sideways velocity, we're going to have to burn off more velocity. Now, I'm not guarante guaranteeing that this will actually get back to the KSC. It will just be closer to the KSC, probably, <laughs> um, if this works. Um, so yeah, I am actually going to try and get the second stage into orbit as well, because this is not a, hey, look, I got the stage back to the place. This is an actually use a hopefully useful thing um, where you can get stuff into orbit and also bring things back to uh, 
uh, thing, bring things back to land. So we are actually going to try and get this into orbit. We're not going to follow this all the way down. We're just going to attempt this now, and hopefully it will work. I hope I did lock off that fuel. I did. Okay. So we're going to try and go a little sideways, because our aquapsis is no doubt quite high. Yeah, above 50 kilometers. Um, like that. And then we're going to decouple this, uh, have it go a little bit, and then switch back to this. Throttle down. Activate all the fuel, and we're going to use all the engines to burn this way. So if we do that, and then switch to this, and did our rocket delete itself? It did not. Okay, that's going. Um, I don't know what trajectory that's on. On a pretty good trajectory. Now, it's not um, perfect. It's not actually going to make it back to the KSC, but you can see that... Okay, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit here. There we go, that should be fine. We're going to want to try and get into a pretty low orbit, actually, to try and catch this in time. Um, that will be the main problem, catching it in time. This is now going to spend less time um, before it hits the ocean. But you can see it's it's going to land really close to the KSC, much better than when it landed kind of over here-ish. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that will be... Uh, hopefully that'll work. So, yeah, we should have time. Uh, I'm going to try and force this into orbit quite quickly, though. Decouple those fairings and throttle up. Uh, this won't be as nice an orbit as last time, because I am a little panicked that this is going to hit the ocean first. But yeah, you could see, and if you put a little more fuel on it, you could definitely get back to the KSC. Um, but again, that your payload to orbit uh, capability will suffer the more landing fuel you put on it. Um, of course, actually, this lands on parachutes probably entirely by itself, so I could have burned the other fuel as well and uh, gotten back to the KSC. But for the purposes of this, you know, we're just going to burn one tank of fuel. Um, all right. We're getting our speed up now, we should be able to catch this, and nice, luckily, Kerbin's actually rotating under us, so we'll be even closer to the KSC than uh, we thought we would be. Um, although I'm sure many of you expected the uh, planet to rotate, you know, it still uh, amazes me that planets rotate at all. Why do they do that? <laughs> I don't know, man, maybe they were hit by an asteroid. Okay, alright, we're in orbit, and... Uh that's actually not why planets rotate. Oh god, I'm gonna have to somehow cut that out. That makes me sound so stupid. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're gonna zoom into this so that we can unlock that fuel again. Oh no, it's still on full thrust. Actually, thinking about it, we could probably, if we really wanted, get all the way back to the KSE using this fuel. We'll give it a shot. Go over this way because we can land entirely on parachutes? Ish? No, that's not quite going to do it, I don't think. So I think, yeah, we are still going to land somewhere in the ocean. Hopefully we can land on parachutes, because I just burned all of the fuel. Um, but we are heading over that way a little bit. And we are actually, yeah, we're really close. This is pretty good. We're within the island. I'm, I'm very proud of this. I, I wasn't fully sure this was going to work. But yeah, all right. And then hopefully this will land entirely on parachutes and won't explode in the ocean. Oh, no, I time warped. Oh, no. <laughs> they broke due to stress. Um, uh, oh, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> What's going to hit the ocean? Okay, what a terrible end to a tutorial. But um, you can see basically what happened there is my parachute broke because uh, I was time warping too much. Which was a massive oversight. But you can see, if I hadn't done that, we would have landed here. And this is way closer than KSC than we were before. Before, we were kind of here-ish. And it's clearly extremely possible to land here-ish. Maybe even here-ish. Who knows? <laughs> but yes, that is my tutorial for using rockets. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's, uh, yeah, there's two ways to do various things, and uh, now you can reuse your own rockets. Save you some money. Be a little like SpaceX. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.